Good morning or good afternoon. Uh, we are starting our first of two lessons on solving systems of equations using elimination. Um, now, sometimes this is also called the addition method, or I also have heard it called linear combinations. And we're going to talk about the idea underneath it. This is generally the form of solving systems that most students prefer. Um, it is a little bit cleaner than the substitution method, but it does involve some thinking. When I was an algebra student, I actually did not like this method because I didn't really grasp why it worked and why it was okay to do the things that we did. So I want to start by addressing that. I think we would all agree, I don't know what that's about, let's try that again, that 2 is equal to 2. Okay, I don't think anybody has a, a problem with that. And it's like a very simple equation there. Uh, there's no variables in it, and it's just a, a nice true statement. And we would also agree that 7 is equal to 7. Okay, like nothing earth-shattering. Now, watch what I can do with these two statements here. I have a left side and I have a right side, and the equal signs are lined up. I can actually add these two statements together and I get 2 plus 7 is 9, bring down the equal sign, and then uh, 2 plus 7 is 9. And so if I take a statement that is true and another statement that is true, and I add them going down, I will also get a statement that's true. Now this works not just with numbers. It's the easiest to see with numbers. It's almost painfully obvious with numbers. But it also works with things that have variables. So for instance, if I know that 2x is equal to 4, and I know that 3x is equal to 6, okay, now, like in this case, you could add, you could, you know, figure it out, but just bear with me here, because it's a concept that's important. I can add them together, and I can get 2x plus 3x is 5x, and 4 plus 6 is equal to 10, and that would also work. So if you kind of do this out, if you've got 2x equals 4, you could divide both sides by 2, and I think most of you can see that x would have to be equal to 2. And if I have this statement, 3x equals 6, we'll divide both sides by 3. 6 divided by 3, you would get x is equal to 2. Uh, I made a bit of a mess of that, but hang on, I'll just fix it. Okay, and then I add them together and I get 5x is equal to 10, and x would still be equal to 2. Now, the reason I'm going through that is I want to establish why it makes sense that we can take two things that we know to be equal and we can add them together and we get something else that we know to be like okay. Because what we're going to do when we solve systems by elimination is this. This is the key idea that this strategy is based off of. We can add equations vertically and they will still be equal. And they will still be equal, provided that you know we are working within a system. So remember that a system is two or more equations with the same variables. Equations with the same variables. All right. And so as long as you're dealing with the same variables, okay, that kind of goes back to this here, that you're dealing with x and you agree that like x is the same for, for both equations, um, then you are allowed to do this. So this is the key idea, and this is the part that kind of bothered me when I was a student because um, I just didn't quite grasp why we were allowed to do this. I could do it and I could get the right answer, but I was never really comfortable with it because it didn't make sense. So on the next slide here, I'm going to put the steps for how we solve a system using this strategy, and I'll pause for a moment to give people time to copy those steps or take a picture of them. 
Okay, so take a look at this. Um, I'm going to talk through what these steps are, and then I have uh, three or possibly four example problems to work through. So the first step in solving a system using this strategy is you want to align all the variables in the equal sign. So what that means is something like this. I'm not going to actually do out um, the the process. I'm not going to solve these problems. I just want you to know what these steps are referring to. So if you have something like 2x minus 3y equals 5, um, and the other equation is 4x plus 5y equals 7, okay? And what we mean by that first step is that you need your x's lined up, you need your y's lined up, you need your equal signs lined up, and you need your constants lined up. Now, usually they will be lined up in that order, but they don't have to be. So you could see something like this, 2x plus 4 equals 7y, and 3x minus 5 equals negative 5y. That would also work. Your x's are lined up, your constants are lined up, your equals are lined up, and your y's are lined up. So while you most often will see it look like that, there's nothing that says it has to be exactly like that. Um, you can see them lined up in another order as long as everything is lined up. So a lot of times these problems come already lined up, but if they're not, you might have to do a little adding and subtracting to get the pieces lined up. So that's what that first step means, align all the variables and the equal sign. The second step is multiply one or both equations as needed. Now, this is the step that tends to trip students up because this is what I call the thinking step. So this strategy is not like substitution, which is very automatic. Um, you have the, the list of steps and you follow the steps. This strategy requires you to think. And it requires you to make some decisions. So what's involved in this step is you have to decide which variable you want to eliminate. And eliminate. Variable you want to eliminate. Sometimes there is a very clear better choice, but there's not a right and wrong choice. So if you have equations that have X's and Y's in them, you can choose to eliminate either the X or the Y. There's not a right or wrong answer to that, but there might be a choice that is clearly better. Okay, um, then the other. And as we go through the examples, I'll try to explain what you're looking for that would determine what's the, the better way to do it. Now, it says multiply one or both as needed. It's possible that you might not need to um, multiply either of them. Okay, like you could just, it could come ready made to jump all the way down to step three, which is nice if that happens. Um, but once you decide what variable to eliminate, then you have to make this decision. You have to ask yourself this, what do I need to multiply by to get the elimination? Because when you add them, elimination, I have trouble talking and writing, there we go. Uh, what do you need to multiply by to get the elimination? So the idea is, is that when you add them, you're going to eliminate an, a variable, but you might need to multiply by something first in order to make that happen. Both of these require you to think through the problem and to make some decisions about how you want to proceed. And there's not one right way to do it. So with the substitution, there's often like one right way or one best way to do the substitution. Sometimes you, you have some flexibility, like with the word problem that we did. Uh, but with this, there's always some flexibility in what you could decide to do. And so your work and your neighbor's work might not look the same and you might both have it completely correct. Once you multiply the equations, then you add them going down and that mimics what we did over here. You'll just do straight adding going down. And when you do that, here's the key thing, one of your variables should be eliminated. And that's why you have to like think ahead in that previous step. One variable should be eliminated. If you add them going down and one of the variables is not eliminated, then that means you made a mistake in the previous step and you need to go back and reevaluate what you multiplied by. 
So you um, add them together, you'll get um, uh, one of the variables to drop out, which will leave you with just one variable, which brings us to step four. I meant to say step four. I think I hit the pause button on that a little bit early, so it brings us to step four. Um, you will solve the resulting equation. So the resulting equation, if you've done it right, would look something like this. Right, something like uh, 3y equals 12, and so you would just solve that, and you would get y equals 4. Okay, So that's what we mean by solve the resulting equation. And then the last step of this process is use substitution to find the other variable. So once you get something like y equals 4, you can go back and plug that into the original equation and figure out what x is equal to. But you do have another option. The other option is to repeat the process for the other variable. So if you think back uh, to step two, the question that you had to ask was, what, uh, what, do, what variable do I want to eliminate? Um, you can actually just go back and decide on eliminating the other variable. Now, that is a better um, method if you get like a nasty number. So four is not bad. So if I got four, I would use substitution. But if I got like, um, I don't know, if I got something like y equals 17 over 56, okay, um, I don't actually want to substitute with 17 over 56, and so I might decide that it's easier just to repeat this process again. So now that we've got that there, um, do make sure that you take a picture of this uh, if you haven't already, or that you pause the video if you're watching it on your own to copy the steps down. Um, now that we've gone over the steps, now you, you really need to see what do they look like when you actually do them. So I'm going to work through, um, again, like three or four examples. And if they spill into the next lesson, that's fine. You can just like break this up like we did with the systems by substitution. So the first example that I have is this. This is the easiest version of this problem that you could find. This is actually so easy that uh, a lot of people could do it in their heads, or at least they could do part of it in their heads. So the first step then is you have to line up, I'm going to click back over here, line up all the variables in the equal sign. So we come over here, line up your x's, good, they're lined up, line up the threes, uh, the y's, good, they're lined up, equals lined up, constants lined up. So for this one, that first step is already done. Now, the second step, again, this is the step where stuff tends to not go well uh, for students because you have to think. So here's the goal. When I add them, I want one of the variables to drop out. So let's take a look at this. If I add these, 2x plus 2x would give me 4x. Okay. Negative 3y plus 3y. Just kind of like put this off to the side. Negative 3y plus 3y would give me 0. And so if I add them, I'm going to end up with a 0. The y would be eliminated. So this is one of those examples where it's not as needed. This is ready-made. There is no other way you want to do this problem. So let's go ahead and move on to step four, which was add the equations. So this one is one of the easiest ones that you can see because everything's lined up and you actually don't need to do any uh, multiplication. So I'll go ahead and add them. 2x plus 2x is 4x negative 3y plus 3y is 0, and then 4 plus 8 is 12, and you don't need to write that, okay? So you are welcome to just write 4x equals 12. Next step is solve the resulting equation. So we divide both sides by 4, and we get x is equal to 3. Now remember back to the last lesson, the definition of a solution to a system is the values of the variables that make all the equations true. I only have one of the variables here. I have the x. So now I have an option. Um, I can substitute to find the y, or I can repeat the process for the other variable. So we're going to substitute to find the y. You can substitute into either of those equations. It does not matter. I'm going to pick this one because it does not have negatives. So I'm going to do uh, 2x plus 3y equals 8. I'm going to plug in the 3 for the x. And like from this point on, it's the same as the other um, ones that we've done, subtract six from both sides, 
So 3y equals 2, and I have managed to run out of space. 3y equals 2. Divide both sides by 3, and y equals 2 thirds. Leave it as a fraction. There's no reason for you to bust out your calculator or do anything. It's fine as a fraction. And so my answer to this is x equals 4, y equals 2 thirds, or you can write it as your ordered pair. Ta-da! So that's how that works. This is actually one of the easiest kind because it's ready-made. So what you're looking for on this is you're looking for positive and negative of the same thing. So positive 3 and negative 3. Um, if you see that, then you know that when you add them, it will be canceled out. Photomath is going to do this in bizarro way. Don't use Photomath on these problems, it will lead you astray. Just trust me, it, it's like don't, just don't, okay? No photo math on these problems. It's, photo math is gonna make it really hard for you. But moving on, my little spiel about photo math, we're done with my little spiel. Let's look at example two. So this is negative two x plus three y equals six, and then I have x plus two y equals 13. So looking at our steps, step number one is to um, line up your x's and your y's, your equal sign and your constant. So I look at this, I have my x's lined up, I have my y's lined up, my equals and my constants. So that part is done. Now we get to that next step that like what I call the thinking step. Now we have to multiply one or both equations as needed. And in order to do that, we need to make some decisions. We need to ask ourselves, which variable do I want to eliminate? There's no right or wrong answer. You can answer X or you can answer Y. And, and both of them are fine. In this case, one of them is easier. So remember that what we're trying to get is the positive and negative of the same number. So I'm looking at the X's here and what I'm observing is that I have a negative and then I have a positive, okay? And I like that because that's what I'm looking for, a negative and a positive. The problem is that I don't have the same number. Um, this is a negative two and this is, if you don't remember, that's a positive one. So I don't have the same number, but I can get the same number. If I did one times two, I could get a two. Just... I'm going to slow it down here so to give you time to think. 1 times 2 would give me a 2. So what I want to do here is I would like to multiply this by 2. I am not allowed to just multiply a piece of an equation by 2 because now it's not balanced anymore. I multiplied over here by true, but I didn't multiply this and I didn't multiply this. So like it's not equal anymore. If you go to multiply by a number, which we are, you have to make sure that you multiply everything by that number in order to keep it balanced. Okay, we want to, to keep it balanced so the equal sign still works. So I like to go, like, I, I'm a big advocate of work top to bottom. This is one of the only times that I actually do a, a step out to the side. Um, I use, like, a little arrow. The top equation I'm not multiplying. So the top equation I'm just going to copy over. So negative 2x plus 3y equals 6. Now, on the bottom, I'm going to multiply everything. So 2 times 1 gives me 2. So I have 2x. 2 times 2x, or sorry, y, 2 times 2y is 4y. Oops, I wanted to keep my color there. Um, 4y. And then 2 times 13 is 26. And I have no space over there. Hang on. Okay, it, it took me a couple tries, but I got it. Uh, now, when I look at my equations... I have um, the positive and the negative of the same thing. So when I go to add them, negative 2x plus 2x is 0. It's going to be eliminated. 3y plus 4y is 7y. And then 6 plus 26 is 32. You don't need to write that 0. Okay, that's like silly. You don't have to write that. And then divide both sides by 7. 
And I'm not messing with that. I am leaving that as 32 over 7. Um, so at this point, you might want to cry a little bit. Um, you think like, oh, that's horrible. It is. It's kind of horrible. Um, so we'll look at a couple of different ways we can handle it. You can uh, take this and substitute it in. Okay, and you can substitute it into either equation. I actually like this equation right here, the blue one on the bottom. And the reason I like that is because it's, it's simpler than the one above it. But either one would work. You would get the same answer either way. So I am going to go ahead and do this with substitution. So I'm going to change my colors up. I have x plus 2y equals 13. And I'm going to substitute in the 32 over 7 in place of the y. As much as I don't like that fraction. And typically what I would do at this point is I would actually um, show students how to use your calculator to do this. Um, your calculator will handle all of these fractions for you. I would like to think that everybody in all my classes can handle all the fraction arithmetic. But I know that it's sticky. And even if you do know how to do it, you, you probably don't want to. Um, so... But without, um, you know, everybody having a calculator and we're not going to be sharing calculators and that kind of thing this year, um, it's a little bit harder for me to go through that. But your calculator will do it. I'll, maybe I'll do like a, a tutorial on Teams at some point to uh, show you guys how that works. 2 times 32 over 7 is uh, 64 over 7. And then uh, to solve this, we subtract 64 over 7 from both sides. And so x is equal to 13 minus 64 over 7. I would probably use my calculator to do this because, I mean, I, I'm, I can do fractions just fine. I just don't want to. Um, that one does have a common denominator of 7. Um, you can change it to 91 over 7, but I don't really want to go there. Um, I, you know what? I'll do a quick little tutorial thing on the calculator because I'm not going to do the next example problems. Um, if you have a Casio and like some TIs, take a look for a button that looks like this. Okay, if you see a button that looks like that, that's like a fraction button. A lot of calculators have it and you can actually enter in that arithmetic. You would do 13 minus and then you would do um, 64 and then you would hit that button. And it would pop up a symbol that probably looked like that. And then you would hit enter and it would give you uh, the 27 over 7. It might give you a mixed number. Okay, so it might give you um, whatever whatever that is as a mixed number. Um, what, like 3 and 6 sevenths or something. Um, if you hit shift and then you hit this button again, it should change it to an improper fraction. If you have a TI graphing calculator. Okay, let's see if I, I don't have a TI um, where I'm recording this, that you can type it in like this. You do uh, 13 minus 64 and then use the division bar for your fraction. And then it's going to give you a decimal. Okay, because the TI is going to revert to a decimal. Um, do this. Find the button that is labeled math and press that button. And then the first menu option under that is going to be number one, and it's going to have this like little arrow, and it'll say frac, okay? And what's going to happen is you're going to see that pop up um, over here on the right, and what you're telling the calculator is, hey, calculator, take my decimal and change it to a fraction, and the calculator will go ahead and change that over for you and will give you the 27 over 7, okay? Um, try that on your calculator. Know your calculator, and um, I am so willing to help you guys with your calculators so that you can navigate your way around this. So we're going to call it quits on um, systems of elimin with elimination part one, um, you're welcome to go look at your homework, maybe give it a start. You won't be able to do all the problems on your homework, but if you recognize any you can do, then go ahead and do them. Be prepared for, with questions tomorrow.